we will see the impact of acid rain. This topic is really really very easy. Only thing you have to remember this point and then you can elaborate by yourself. Then there are three main categories in which we have divided the impact of acid rain. First is soil, then water bodies and some, some general impact of acid rain. So let us first see soil. Then in the soil, the first effect which acid rain is causing is nutrient leaching. How is it so? That when a sulfuric acid will mixed with the soil, then it is it will come in a contact with a water molecule and mist, then it will convert into H plus and SO4 minus 2. Now this SO4 minus 2 will again react with a soil minerals like potassium and calcium. When this minerals are making a compound with this sulfate then it won't be available for the crop. So that's why it is known as nutrient leaching where all the minerals will combine with sulfate and they are making compound. In turn this mineral will not be useful for the plant growth. So this is nutrient leaching. Then second is change the acidity and this will increase the acidity. That means the soil, the pH of the soil will decrease. It will increase the acidity. So that's why it won't be suitable for majority of the crop. So you have to do some treatment on the soil to reduce its acidity. Third is soil fertility. It is affecting the soil fertility because it is increasing acidity and in turn the nutrient leaching will be happening. So it is reducing soil fertility and the activity of nitrogen fixing bacteria will be inhibiting. When the acidity will increase this will inhibit the activity of nitrogen fixing bacteria. So they won't generate much of the nitrogen which is helpful for the plant growth. So in turn it is causing a large amount of damage to soil fertility. Now coming to water bodies, when the traces of acid is mixing with a water body and the water then mercury, lead and zinc will mix with the water. How? As the rain will fall on the ground, on the soil, it will combine with this heavy metals, mercury, lead and zinc. In turn when water will flow towards the river and it is mixing with the river then it is mixing with all this heavy metal. Then this soil is mixing with the river and it is taking this heavy metal along with it. So in turn our water body is get polluted by all these heavy metals. Now it changes pH. When acid traces will mix with water bodies it will change its pH and it will lower down its pH. Now most aquatic animal can't survive below pH 4. When it is lowering the pH it will be harmful for the aquatic animal. Why? Because they are they will not survive below pH 4. Now some general impacts are it affects the transpiration and it will give a retard growth and it will also affect the rate of photosynthesis of the plants. So in turn where the acid rain stresses are more on the soil, in that soil the plant growth is not normal and it will not flourish. Second, toxicity enters food chain. It is a very important point. What is a food chain? We know that it is very important for us to survive and for our ecosystem. When it is entering into the soil, when it is entering into a water body, it is very likely and very easy to enter into a food system and in turn it will enter into a human body also. So it will cause a maximum harm to human and as well as the ecosystem when it will enter the food chain. Now material damage. In terms of material damage, all the metal surfaces, sculptures, the plaster of Paris statue, 
all this will affect because acid will react with all these things and it will corrode all these things so this will cause a material damage so in turn acid rain is very very harmful for human being and our ecosystem and it generates because of the human activity as human is contributing to 70 to 80 percent of the pollution and pollutant to the earth now we'll see how to control acid rain so by using alternative energy sources we can control acid rain now what all are the alternative energy sources like cng then hydropower plant and wind energy some renewable resources which will help us to reduce the acid rain because all the energy source, sources like petrol diesel all petroleum product and fossil fuel when we are burning it it will definitely emits the oxides of carbon and oxides of sulfur so if we want to reduce those then we have to use the alternative energy sources and it will lead us to renewable energy sources which are hydropower plant wind energy and cng like sources then second is usage of technical resources like we have to use catalytic converter now what this catalytic converter will do that which will reduce the emission of no2 now once it will reduce the emission of no2 so nitrogen dioxide will reduce and in turn the nitric acid and nitrous acid will not form so it will be beneficial to control the acid rain so these are two main points by which we can control the acid rain